Hi guys, thanks for joining Eastwood Animal Clinic. I'm Dr. Sammy Gibson and we appreciate y'all support and hopefully y'all learn something out of these videos. So today what we're gonna talk about is dead necrotic tissue. So I've been seeing a few of these lately, so we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> so what that means, or a lot of times when it happens, when I see it, it's from a traumatic dog fight or hit by car issues or when they've been dragged behind a car unknowingly or intention mutilation of a patient and if anybody sees that call your law enforcement it is a federal offense and they can get in a lot of trouble and go to jail we gotta try and defend these fur babies as best we can not everybody has a, a big heart and wants to take care of them sorry so that was a side note tangent <laughs> back to basically we'll have dead necrotic tissue so an easy way for you to identify that at home is by colors um, where this doesn't quite work is if your patient has dark pigmented skin or black skin. Don't see very many patients with that, but they are out there and they do exist. If you got one of those dark skin patients, this won't really help you real well with the color. So on most of our patients, they either have white or pink skin or a lighter tone, kind of like a grayish tone. So what you want to look for is margins. Margins are going to be the edges of it, kind of think of it as the perimeter. So if we start getting black, black is not good. Black is death, death signs, necrotic tissue. We want pink, vibrant, life-like colors, not purple, dark purple, <laughs> turning into black. Once it gets black, what that means is the vasculature to that tissue has been compromised and therefore it's not getting nutrition from the blood. It's not getting red blood cells, which carry oxygen. Therefore, you aren't getting nutrition and you aren't getting oxygen, those tissues die. When we go in on these surgeries, depending on the area, some areas, we can cut them out and then can do some flap techniques and different things like that and shift tissues around and close them. Some of them get so big, we don't have enough tissue on the patient to close the flap and that's okay. We go in, we cut out the dead tissue, throw that away. We want to do that because dead rotten tissue will become a source of infection and that can get pretty toxic to these patients and can ultimately kill them. So we do want to address it and stay on top of that. Once we go in for our surgical debridement, we'll find our margins, cut it. Usually we'll check for, keep cutting till we get blood, till something bleeds. When it's bleeding, that's when we usually have healthy tissue. If it's not bleeding, it's because it doesn't have blood supply, because it's probably dead or dying tissue. So cut that out. And then if it's too big, you manage it by what's called second intention healing. And there's a whole process to go through that. A lot of veterinarians will go through that in different ways, multiple ways to do it. A lot of them work really, really well. So to each their own. So watch out for those big black areas that are growing. Usually it's gonna be after some form of a traumatic event. So watch it close and then follow up with your veterinarian, guys. If it's still there or growing. We'll see y'all next time. Hope you learned something. <laughs> Bye.